October 31, 2025. Scientists expected another icy wanderer, then 3i slash Atlas reappeared from behind the sun, shattering nearly every rule in the comet playbook. Its chemistry, color, and orbit make no sense, even the best theories can't explain it. If what we're seeing is real, it could transform how we think about life's origins, or expose limits in physics itself. So why does this object exist at all, and what might the next observations reveal? As the calendar ticked toward late October, anticipation grew. The eight-day blackout behind the sun became a source of tension. Observers compared notes, double-checked predictions, and prepared for the possibility that the object might change, or even vanish, while hidden. On October 31st, the first images after conjunction arrived, revealing that something fundamental had shifted. But the story of 3i slash Atlas's anomalies and the scramble to explain them began with that initial July detection, the rapid mobilization of global resources, and the human network that sprang into action the moment the rules seemed to break. Cosmic rays travel the galaxy at nearly the speed of light, and for billions of years, they bombard anything that drifts between the stars. For 3 i slash Atlas, this relentless exposure left a mark. An outer shell estimated at 15 to 20 meters thick, chemically altered and hardened by radiation. Dr. Romain Maggiolo's models, widely debated at the 2025 Paris YNSO conference, describe how galactic cosmic rays would transform the first several meters of an interstellar comet's surface. Over time, simple ices like water and carbon dioxide are broken apart and recombined, producing a dense layer of complex organics and exotic molecules. The result? A crust so tough and so red it stands apart from the comets born in our own solar system. This theory found its first major test with the arrival of 3 Mai slash Atlas. Early spectroscopic data from Dr. Michael Cordina's team, using the James Webb Space Telescope and SphereX, revealed chemical ratios that had never been recorded in a comet. The most striking number came from the ratio of carbon dioxide to water vapor. In solar system comets, water is usually the dominant volatile, making up as much as 80% of the outgassed material. For 3i slash Atlas, water accounted for only about 4% by mass. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, was measured at nearly 7.6 times the water content a result confirmed across multiple instruments and observation nights. The surface itself told a similar story. Optical and near-infrared reflectance spectra showed a pronounced red slope, with up to 27% more reflectivity per thousand angstroms compared to baseline comets. This deep brick-red color is a signature of heavy organic processing, the kind seen in laboratory analogs after simulated cosmic ray bombardment. Laboratory studies by Hudson, Moore, and Palumbo support this. After enough exposure, ordinary ices darken and redden, trapping volatiles and reducing the surface's permeability. The crust acts as a barrier, holding back deeper, more pristine ices, especially water, from escaping until significant erosion occurs. The crust hypothesis offers a single natural explanation for several of three Islash Atlas's early surprises. High CO2 and CO levels, low water production, and unusually red coloration all fit the predictions of a galactic ray-processed surface. If the models are right, the comet's activity should be dominated by this outer layer for much of its journey through the solar system. Only when solar heating finally ablates the crust should the inner, water-rich ices become detectable. Until then, the chemistry and color of 3 slash atlas are shaped by its long exile in interstellar space, not by the sun's gentle touch. Yet even as this framework gained traction, observers knew it would be tested against every new anomaly. The radiation crust model sets clear, measurable expectations. Persistent red slopes, consistently high CO2 to water ratios, and a lag in water production until the crust is breached. If these predictions fail, the theory falls. For now, the weight of the early data leans heavily toward a surface sculpted by cosmic rays, a hypothesis that stands, but not unchallenged, as the investigation deepens. Nickel lines first appeared in the spectral catalog on August 17th, flagged by a team at the Very Large Telescope in Chile. The emission was clear, but iron, normally present in every observed comet, was missing or below detection limits. 
This pattern held in subsequent nights, confirmed by independent teams using ALMA and the Nordic Optical Telescope. For decades, comet spectra have shown nickel and iron rising and falling together, their ratio rarely straying from solar norms. In 3I slash ATLAS, the nickel to cyanide ratio was several times higher than any entry in the ESA comet database since 1986. The absence of iron, if real, has no precedent in the record. Some astronomers floated the idea of supernova fallback material or rare interstellar chemistry, while others cautioned that instrument bias or calibration drift could be at play. Without high-resolution spectra and repeated confirmation, the nickel anomaly remains a reported but unverified outlier, with December's observing campaign set to provide the first decisive tests. The puzzle deepened with polarimetry. Early in September, polarimeters in Hawaii and South Africa recorded light scattered by the coma at phase angles where most comets show mild negative polarization, typically minus 1 to minus 3%. 3i slash ATLAS returned values described in internal logs as off the chart. Reports from the Harvard group and several European teams used the phrase extreme negative, but withheld specific numbers pending calibration. In the entire published catalog, no comet has shown stable, repeatable polarization below minus 5% at these angles. The teams ran redundancy checks cross-calibrated with solar analogs, and even rotated instruments to rule out systematic errors. Still, the anomaly persisted in preliminary data. Senior reviewers, quoted in synthesis essays, raised the possibility of stray light or background subtraction issues, but the claim of an unprecedented negative polarization remains on the table, awaiting peer-reviewed release and independent replication. Until then, the result is a scientific rumor, not a confirmed fact. Trajectory analysis brought its own surprises. 3. I slash ATLAS follows a retrograde path traveling nearly opposite the planets but within 5 degrees of the ecliptic. Its inbound arc threaded between Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, an alignment so precise that orbital dynamicists calculated the probability of a random interstellar object passing this close to all three planets at just 5 in 100,000. The Minor Planet Center's simulation logs confirm that, among thousands of synthetic interstellar tracks, almost none come close to matching the geometry of 3i slash A T L A S. Some argue that survey bias and the small sample size of interstellar objects could explain the coincidence, while others insist that even with detection biases, the odds remain strikingly low. The flyby geometry has become a focal point in debates over the object's true origin, with some theorists suggesting statistical flukes and others hinting at more exotic possibilities. Each of these findings, metallic composition, polarization, and orbital threading, has been scrutinized by teams working across continents and disciplines. The data resist easy classification. Nickel-rich, iron-poor spectra challenge the chemical rules of comet formation. Polarization values, if confirmed, would require dust or surface structures not seen in any catalogued comet. The orbit's precision threading through the inner solar system defies the statistics of known interstellar visitors. Together, these anomalies widen the gap between what the radiation crust model can explain and what the instruments that they are actually reporting. The evidence is stacking up, and the tension is clear. The deeper astronomers look, the more the familiar rules begin to break down. Activity-driven surprises, jets, color shifts, and positional jumps are still to come, but already, three. I slash Atlas has forced a reckoning with the boundaries of cometry science. In July, telescopes from Hawaii to South Africa caught a comet behaving in ways no one expected. Instead of a tail streaming away from the sun, 3I slash Atlas sent a jet straight toward it, a sunward plume that defied the basic rules of comet physics. Most comets lose material to solar heat, forming tails that point outward, but here, the jet held its shape for weeks, even as Earth's position shifted. Imaging time series from the ATLAS network and the South African Large Telescope tracked this anomaly through August. No standard dust or projection model explained its direction or intensity. Laboratory experiments and solar wind simulations failed to reproduce the effect. 
Some researchers floated theories about plasma jets or electromagnetic forces, but nothing fit the data. The jet forced astronomers to rethink what drives cometary activity. Was this the signature of hidden ices, venting through deep fractures, or something even stranger? As October neared, attention turned to perihelion. Solar conjunction cut off observations, raising tension. Then, on October 29th, as 3i slash Atlas rounded the sun, it erupted in brightness. Photometric curves from ground-based telescopes and coronagraphs aboard SOHO and STEREO showed a surge, luminosity climbing at a rate never seen before, following an R sub H to the minus 7.5 law, far steeper than the norm. Within hours, the comet's color profile shifted dramatically blueward, outshining the sun in some ultraviolet and blue filters. The hashtag hashtag blue comet flooded amateur networks. Professional teams scrambled for more telescope time. The blue surge pointed to a sudden dominance of fine, icy grains or freshly exposed material, likely from fragmentation or a violent outburst. NASA and ESA teams called emergency meetings as satellite telemetry flagged brief anomalies in the comet's signal. For a short time, image releases were restricted, fueling speculation. Astrometric analysis soon revealed a new puzzle. Comparing predicted and actual positions, teams found a consistent 4 arc second offset. Solar gravity alone should have produced nearly 7 times that, but the direction and timing didn't match gravitational light bending. The residual offset pointed to a sudden, non-gravitational force, possibly a jet-driven acceleration or a fragmentation event that changed the comet's momentum. If outgassing or jets were responsible, the implied mass loss was staggering. Early estimates suggested up to 15% of the nucleus, billions of tons, would need to be ejected to match the observed acceleration. Yet, no massive debris cloud appeared in the aftermath. Coronagraph datasets from SOHO and STEREO, cross-referenced with ground-based photometry, provided the clearest evidence for these kinetic anomalies. The comet's centroid drifted in a pattern that didn't match smooth, continuous outgassing. The data pointed to either an impulsive event, a sudden burst or breakup, or a highly asymmetric evolving jet. The rapid brightening, blue color surge, and positional jump converged on a single question. What process could drive such dramatic changes so quickly? Thermophysical models struggled to keep pace. Simulations with deeply buried supervolatiles or pressure-driven jets reproduced some features, but not all. Catastrophic fragmentation remained a possibility, given the scale of mass loss implied by the offset. With each new dataset, the mass budget question sharpened. If the comet lost so much bulk, a dense debris cloud should be visible. Its absence left open the possibility that something more subtle, or entirely new, was at work. For now, the evidence stack was clear. A sunward jet resisting explanation, a perihelion brightening and blue surge that defied thermal models, and a positional jump pointing to powerful, unseen forces inside 3 slash Atlas. A comet losing 15% of its mass in a matter of days is not a subtle event. For 3i Atlas, the numbers are staggering. If the nucleus is at the small end of estimates, around 220 meters across, that still means at least 10 billion kilograms of material vanished during perihelion. If it is closer to 2.8 kilometers, the missing mass climbs by two orders of magnitude. Thermophysical models demand that such a loss, whether from jets or a violent breakup, should leave a clear signature. A dense debris cloud, bright in the infrared, with optical depth and surface brightness well above the detection threshold for even modest telescopes. Yet, in the days and weeks after the positional jump, no such cloud was seen. Infrared and millimeter surveys from ALMA and ground-based arrays found no lingering thermal excess. Photometric profiles stayed sharp, not blurred by a swarm of dust. The absence of a massive, slow-moving coma. Challenges the simplest outgassing scenario. If jets or fragmentation really drove the acceleration, the debris must have been dispersed as fine, short-lived grains, quickly swept away by solar radiation pressure, or perhaps never produced in bulk at all. This is not just a missing detail, it is a direct, testable prediction. 
The mass loss budget and the fate of that missing material now stand as the most measurable outcome of the crisis. A binary question that will be settled by the next round of high-cadence, multi-wavelength observations. December 19, 2025 stands as the decisive checkpoint for 3I Atlas. On this night, telescopes across five continents and a fleet of spacecraft will lock onto the comet, each targeting a different piece of the puzzle. The James Webb Space Telescope will scan for infrared signatures of organics and water. Hubble and the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory will chase ultraviolet flashes, especially the hydrogen Lyman Alpha line, a direct tracer of water outgassing. The Atacama Large Millimeter Array will hunt for nickel, cyanide, and carbon monoxide in the millimeter band, while ground-based arrays will track the comet's path to within a fraction of an arc second. Amateur networks, coordinated through the Minor Planet Center, are primed for continuous photometry and astrometry, filling any gaps left by clouds or equipment downtime. The checklist is stark. Does a dense debris cloud appear bright enough in infrared or optical to account for the missing mass? Is Lyman Alpha emission strong enough to prove a surge of water ice, or does it stay low, favoring the processed crust model? Do nickel and cyanide lines spike together, hinting at a supernova origin? Is the anti-tail jet still visible, and does polarization repeat its extreme negative swing? Most of all, does the comet's position deviate by more than two arc seconds from gravitational predictions? Each test is a pass or fail, no room for ambiguity. The campaign's outcome will hinge on these measurements, with every observer, from flagship missions to backyard telescopes, playing a role in the verdict. For now, 3 I slash Atlas stands as documented evidence that our rules for comets and interstellar objects are not complete.